back to my channel and if you're new here my name's Chanel and I upload new videos every weeks weeks <laughs> every week I'm getting ready to take myself on a solo date so if you guys want to see me get ready then keep watching myself some matcha this is my first time making it it's actually very tasty so we're gonna keep the makeup relatively light so i'm gonna start off with my rare beauty primer i think that solo dates are so healthy and necessary whether you're single whether you're married it's important to take yourself out and learn how to enjoy your company completely alone out of your significant other outside of your friends or family alex and i spend a ton of time together but today he's going to lunch with one of his guy friends and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take myself out on a date. Breaking out on this side, I got a new retinol and I don't know if that's what's breaking me out or if it's something else. I have been loving this Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer. However, it is expired. Like I got this in 2021, but I rediscovered it again and there was just a little bit left. So I don't know if this is what's breaking me out or not, but I've been loving this for my everyday makeup. Oral's gonna try my Tarte Serum Foundation. We're going on a date, let's switch it up. So I'm gonna use Tarte Serum Foundation again. It's been a minute since I used this. I've been loving to apply my foundations with my fingers. This one's super liquidy and she has good coverage. I'll typically just throw it on with my finger and then I'll go over top with my beauty sponge to push it in and make sure there's no streaks. And I find that this just gives a way more natural finish. Then with a damp, clean beauty sponge, I'm just pushing that in my skin. Have you guys taken yourself on any solo dates ever or recently? I feel like in 2023, that was one of my goals. Not wait to see when people are free, but to just take me out. If I want to try a new restaurant, like I can have just as much fun enjoy the food just as much by myself. Okay, that looks really good and it gave such a sheer amount of coverage, which I love, because then I could just go in this concealer to add extra coverage where I want it. I think I'm gonna use my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I hadn't used this in a while and then I was cleaning out my makeup and I saw it and I saw that I still had a good amount of product left. So I wanna try to finish this up. I've been trying to use up the makeup that I have. I have a ton of PR makeup that I've been trying to get through and try, but I don't put it in my makeup collection until I've tried it. However, like I really don't have room for any new products. So like I need to finish up all my old stuff before I start putting a bunch of new stuff in my collection. I have so much products, but I literally use like the same three products all the time or I'll rotate. I definitely know that it's not just me. And I feel like everybody's starting to like simplify their lives and routines more because for the longest we were just in such a high consumer mindset. There were so many new trends new makeup collection, clothes. Clothing trends have gone so far. Like, I'm sorry, I do not follow trends when it comes to clothes. It's just, if I like it, I get it, but it's just too much to keep up with. I feel like a majority of people have become so overstimulated that we're kind of over it and we just want to boil things down to what's actually necessary. Right, and now I'm just lightly tapping this in my skin with my beauty sponge, doing really light, swift tapping motions, not applying too much pressure. Want to do for contour? Should we use your usual? To bronze slash contour, I'm taking my NYX Wonder Stick. This is in the shade medium tan. I haven't grabbed for this in a minute. I want to switch up my products a little bit. This is a great shade for like daytime contour because it's not too dark. I always like to bring it onto my eyelid because then I find that I don't need to do as much eyeshadow. Chisel out that jawline. All right, what brush do we want to use? I'm also gonna work some on the back of my hand. I'm picking it up with my Bedellium Tools brush. That way the brush already has product on it. So when I go to blend it out, it won't pick up the product and make it look patchy. I have been loving these Bedellium Tools brushes. They're so good. They have sets of them where you can buy them individually. Literally like the best quality brushes. I'm doing swift tapping motions, pushing that into my hairline. See how natural of a contour that is? It's so pretty. The brush comes at an angle, so I'm flipping it upside down when I blend out my cheeks. That way I can lift it upward. I'm doing swift motions upward like this. Always blend up into this corner right here. That gives you a more snatched jawline and take whatever's left on your ears. Taking the very tip of the brush, use that to lightly tap and blend the nose contour. So using that same tip in my eyelid, taking it up toward the temple once we get to the tail. I love brushes that you can use so multi-purposely. I am not the type to grab for a million and one different brushes, especially ever since working for MAC. I feel like that's where I refined a lot of my artistry and a lot of the trainers there would work on fashion week and were very experienced. And they would always tell us to use no more than six brushes for a full face of makeup. You should be able to use one brush at least least three different ways, especially before recommending it to a customer, which I thought was super helpful because obviously like you could make more money if you try to shove 10 brushes down a customer's throat. But if you can show them that they can do a full face of makeup 
with just one or two brushes. That's amazing. So anyways, I've always taken that with me and I try not to use too, too many tools. I'm also just lazy <laughs> when it comes to that and I don't want to every two seconds be switching up my brushes. For blush, I'm taking this mini Jouer blush that came in one of their holiday sets in the shade Peony. It's such a pretty cool tone pink. It looks really bold in the packaging, but it actually shears out really nice. Actually, what I'm gonna do is work it on the back of my hand first. Where's my favorite blush brush? Where you at, girl? Okay, there she is. This has been my favorite cream blush brush recently. It's the Morphe V111. I just work it on the brush. Brush is so small, but the bristles are long, so it's still gonna buff the product out really nice, but you're still gonna have some control so it won't push the product everywhere on your cheek. I just truly love it for cream blush. I always lay it down with this brush first and then I'll go over top of everything with my damp beauty sponge. You know what's interesting though? So like I'm breaking out on this side of my face and like this little cluster here, but then this side is fine. I'm like, I clean my pillows and all that. I clean my sheets regularly. I know sometimes they say it can be because that's the side that you sleep on, but it's just not adding up. I'm gonna take whatever's left on my nose and also run some on my eyelids. I love doing this, especially if I'm not gonna do eyeshadow. I'll literally just throw blush on my eyelids, and mascara, and it's like the prettiest natural flush all over. Taking my Charlotte Tilbury setting mist, I'm gonna mist my face and then we'll set everything with a powder. I'm gonna lightly set all over with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter in the shade two. Now somebody in one of my recent videos commented and asked, what is the difference between the airbrush powder, or I'm assuming she meant like all pressed powders and then translucent loose powder. The biggest difference between the two is translucent powder is not gonna have any color. And I also find that translucent powders tend to be more mattifying because they're typically used as more like touch up powders. I love using both for different things. So I really don't have a preference. The biggest thing, if you're trying to decide which to get would be like what you're using it for and what you're trying to achieve. If you want a powder to travel with and throw in your bag, then you're gonna wanna go with a pressed powder. If you like to do like full glam, and you wanna bake and all of that, then I think it's nice to have both for different things. For example, whenever I'm gonna bake my under eyes, I always set first with a pressed powder and then I go in with a loose powder. I find that pressed powders kind of melt into the skin and look a little bit more natural. And then loose powders to me just always tend to be a little bit more mattifying and look a little bit more powder-like on the skin. It obviously depends on like the brand and all that that you use, but that's like a quick rundown. In the summertime, I'll set all over with a loose powder because it will tend to lock my makeup in place more. However, in the wintertime, I find that if I set all over with the loose powder, it can sometimes start to cling to dry patches. I really don't know the reasoning behind it, if it's just the powder, but just wanted to throw you guys in in case any of you were curious as well. This Hourglass Elephant Powder has been one of my favorite face palettes. I love how it comes with bronzers, highlight blushes. The highlights are more of like a melt in your skin highlight so they're not gonna be too intense. This is like the perfect palette for normal to dry skin and also great for mature skin because they're powders that are just gonna melt in and look like a cream. I'm gonna mix these two shades and use that to bronze all over my skin. This is like the perfect daytime all over bronzer because it will give your skin that lit from within finish. Using a light press then taking a small brush and lightly bronzing the nose. This does have a sheen in it, so I actually would recommend going in with a matte bronzer, but I'm gonna use loose powder in a second that will help take away some of that sheen. However, it will look better with a matte bronzer. I'm gonna actually use both of these shades in the palette for, bru for brush or blush. Wait, actually, this isn't even my favorite blush brush. This one is my favorite, the V106 brush. Taper on it, the density, length of the hairs make it nice and flimsy still. It's just so great for buffing blush. And then I like to take whatever's left and bring it all the way under my eyes. Go over top of it with a loose powder so it ends up like not looking as insane as it looks initially. Beauty Bakery Powder to set my under eyes. This is in Oat Translucent. And so this is gonna have more of like a mattifying effect, but it will also help kind of like brighten and give this filter underneath of the eyes. And I'm gonna work it on the sides of my nose and then bring it out. <music> I also think one really important step if you are gonna take yourself on a date is to like get ready as if you were really going on a date with either your girlfriend or even your husband. Like take time, do your makeup cute, pick out a cute outfit, use your like, I don't know, favorite scented body wash or perfume. Like take the time to treat yourself because the whole point is to enjoy, make yourself feel good and to, and to just have a good time. I think some of that to clean up underneath of the contour, but we're gonna blend that out right away because I hate when there's like a harsh line there. So I wanna use this Jouer. It's a cream eyeshadow crayon in the shade beige glitter and it's like a stunning champagne shade. So I would literally just wanna throw this all over my eyelid. Ooh, she's glittery. A little much for the daytime but whatever, we're going with it. You only live once. Kind of pretty. I'm gonna use this Morphe shader brush to buff this out. 
which what are you guys' thoughts on all the morphe stores closing i think it's crazy i mean but i also thought that i saw it coming but i did go to school for business and they said that like one of the biggest downfalls for businesses is when you open up and you expand too quick because initially yeah you're going to have the hype and business is going to do really well so a lot of businesses will get almost like a high off of that and will be like look at all the money we're making from each location that we're opening so they'll want to keep opening a bunch of locations but then once all that hype dies down now you have to maintain all of those doors all of those employees it can get very expensive and honestly i think it was just a matter of opening stores too quickly and then there's obviously like a ton of other things that go into it okay so the best thing i can relate it to is mac but i think mac is smart with their hype because they're still around for one and they're still somewhat relevant they're not not the it girl like they were in 2015 maybe they were like super hyped up in 2014 to like 2015 i think was like the last year they were always busy i remember working at longcomb and longcomb would be dead but the mac counter was always popping didn't matter what day of the week it was and so they never felt the need to send pr or to do much advertising because they always pride themselves on their advertising being word of mouth times changed they had competition and so their marketing and business strategy had to change as well and that's why now they started sending pr and just like doing different things to keep up with the times but i think had mac opened up too many locations it would have been a problem and they partnered in a lot of department stores like Dillard's, macy's nordstrom instead of it being inside of all those department stores had they opened up stores probably would have been a different story and they probably would have had to close down more stores i'm gonna set everything with my mac Mac Fix Plus. I'm lying. Mac did end up having to close down a few stores post COVID, but they've never had to like close all locations. So now for the brow, this new Koki brow pencil is so good and it's only $8. Could you not, Koki can do no wrong. They just really know what they're doing when it comes to products and making them incredible but affordable. I don't think I've tried one product from them that I haven't loved, not one. I'm really trying to think and there's nothing that I can even think of but yeah ladies valentine's day is coming up you don't have a significant other take yourself on a date or go on a date with your girlfriends go on a date with yourself just do it this is the year to just do things that you feel are super cringy oh i'm setting my brows with my makeup by mario brow gel I only have one left to live don't feel weird because honestly nobody cares nobody at the restaurant is gonna look at you and be like that's embarrassing and if they do they're weird why are they putting that much thought and attention into stranger taking some more of that jouet cream shadow and putting that on my lower lash line i blend that out with my finger the stila heaven's hue highlight in the shade kitten i pick some up with my finger and tap that to highlight this inner corner and i'm also going to pick some up with my beauty sponge that on the high points now it's time for the lips lining with my lancome natural mauve lip pencil i don't want to do a pinky lip Ooh, this is a pretty color I kind of want to try this CoverGirl lipstick. I might completely regret it because it is very pink. It's in the shade Darling Kiss. Mm. Oh gosh. This is like bringing back terrible memories. It's definitely giving Karen. It's giving let's speak to the manager. Let's see if we can fix this. If not, we're switching up the color. Okay, let's try to deepen it up with Anastasia Cool Brown. Using a lit rush to blend that out. I recently discovered this lip gloss and I've been loving it. The Essence Extreme Shine Volume Gloss in the shade Peach Please. Let's see if this will help blend everything out really nice. Okay, looks pretty, kind of. I also think it's because I need to shave my mustache. We're gonna see, we're gonna finish up the rest of the makeup and yeah, maybe once I do my eyeshadow, I mean mascara. But before we do mascara, this has been my favorite thing to do lately. Take a plum eyeliner. This is the Persona Cosmetics 24 waterproof eye pencil in the shade plum. We're just going to quickly line the top lash line. It's not going to look like a straight up purple on your eye. It looks brown, but the undertone is just going to make your brown eyes pop if you have them. This would also look really pretty on hazel eyes or even green eyes. So I lightly just kind of like smudge it on this last third. And then for this front part, I come in and I'll tight line the waterline. Just kind of like blink and i just do this to create a little wink it came out a little too long it's crazy because if i was in tampa this is like very considered very natural makeup in connecticut this is like full glam and i feel like i'm gonna draw too much attention to myself and it's kind of making me anxious because i will be alone but i need to take my own advice and realize that nobody cares or thinks i'm that important so just live your life. Use this little brush to extend the inner corner. Humify eye drops. This will brighten up your eyes and make them look so much brighter. 
Oh no. Okay, and then if this happens, you just take your beauty sponge, not a tissue, and you just lightly tap it. You should also do this if your eyes ever water while doing your makeup, or if you're a makeup artist and your clients, eyes water. Don't take a tissue, take a damp beauty sponge and just tap it into the skin. Like use it almost like setting spray or moisture, just pushing it back into the skin. And then that way it won't pick up any of the makeup. Lastly, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a matte bronzer. This is my Makeup by Mario one. And I'm just gonna lightly dust that in the crease. Just cause I feel like I have so much shine going on right now. Curling my lashes. Sephora Lash Craft Lash Primer. I was debating on doing an up to or I could crimp my hair. What should I do? What do you guys think? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I like for the lash primer to dry. So I'm gonna grab my crimper now, let that heat up, and then this will dry. Then when my crimper heats up, I'll do my mascara. This is the crimper I use, just the bedhead one. It's like $25 from Target or Walmart, or Amazon carries it as well. This is like my favorite when I just wanna do my hair quick, but I wanna look put together. It looks best on super greasy hair. So if you're rocking day six hair like I am, don't judge me, but the crimper will be your best friend. Going on with my Ilia Fullest Volume Mascara. I was highly, highly influenced by Katie Fawn to get this mascara, and I'm glad that I did because it's actually incredible. I would say top five mascaras I've ever used. I love my Lancome mascaras, and this kind of reminds me of the Hypnos Drama, but it gives you like an even more dramatic lash than that one. Dang it, I'm getting it all over my eyelid though. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of brow powder just cause this is my Anastasia one. Taking the lighter tone in the palette and it's in the shade dark brown. I just find that it gives like a softer look to the brow. Over again, you'll make me change my mind. Okay, boom, finally time for hair. Whatever shall we do? We wanna do, I was also thinking about doing like that little pony with like the side part and updo. That could be very cute. Let's just crimp it. And I think I'm gonna do a side part crimp. Spraying my Rusk Thermal Spray. I was so happy I was able to find a travel size of this at Marshalls. Now when I go to Florida next week, I'll have a thermal spray. You guys, I literally did not even have this on the whole time. Um, so while that warms up, comment down below your favorite... What's your favorite color? Mine is like fuchsia. I really like fuchsia and magenta. I also like like this color that this light is right here, like that. It's like a lilac-y fuchsia pink. No, actually, yeah, like this exact color. I love it so much. I think it's such a pretty color. Okay, I think that this is hot enough. And I literally take the biggest chunks of hair because we don't care if it's perfect. We are not perfectionists. That is one thing that I am not. And sometimes it's a problem because it's like I probably should care a little bit more, but I don't sometimes. I literally just hold it in each spot for maybe like four seconds and I pick it up and then I go to the next wave. Nothing crazy, no rhyme or reason. It is about to be 10 years since I started my YouTube channel. 10 years, like 10 years. I wanted to recreate the first video that I ever, ever, ever did. I was like debating on like buying all the products that I used too and just like getting them on eBay, but I also feel like that might be unnecessary. So I think I'm just gonna like recreate the look with products that I have today and maybe make it more of today's version versus the 2013 version. Crazy to think about. 10 years. I remember filming the first video on my iPhone 4. It's just also crazy to think what my life was like then. And like, I would never fathom what my life would be like 10 years later. Oh, I wanna give her a hug. I'm just gonna split this section in half. Do a partial side part. It's just crazy to think about. You know what's crazy to think too? That like, I've always loved the idea of this, creating content because ever since I was in fourth grade, I'd always ask for like little camcorders for Christmas. I remember they had a bunch of toy ones and almost like every year I would ask for a new one. I would make my sister record with me like these little talk shows and I just loved the idea of it. I thought it was so cool. So I really feel like just as a kid, I always loved the idea of producing content in a more raw form versus just like TV production. And it's been fun. I don't think I would ever stop because it's such a cool creative tool because not only is it, for example, here I'm doing makeup. So like the art of makeup, but then you also have to do the art of like editing, lighting, the music, all that ties into this end art form. And that's why whenever I was working on set for the movie set, I thought it was the coolest art form ever because so much goes into it to create this final production or piece of art. Like on the movie set, hair and makeup, but you have to do hair and makeup for the character. The script and writing all that, that's a whole art, art form in itself. Then the cinematography, the lighting, the mood for each scene, editing and all that that will go into it. 
to, music, the set design for the scenes, like what mood are you going for? Oh, we're at a low income household. This is the things that are gonna be in their kitchen. It's just so fascinating. So anyways, I thought that was so cool. And YouTube is obviously a much more smaller scale than that because we do have my set design. Granted, it's all stuff that I use, but it is cool. It's like a mini production. This is cute. Now we need to pick out an outfit or is this video gonna be too long and are you guys still here? If you guys are still here, let's pick out an outfit. First, we need to see what the weather is like outside. It's 50 degrees out. I love this for us. This means hopefully we can sit outside. It's sunny. So I'm really feeling this pink sweater. It looks red on camera. Should I wear black jeans? Should I wear regular denim? And like, what kind of top? Ooh, ooh, but it fits. I have this top kind of like a little corset white top. My Aritzia haul should have already gone up already, so I did share it in that haul. It is a little bit big though, but if I wear it with a cardigan over top, I think that would still be cute. It's my Abercrombie jeans. I'm gonna put it on, and then you guys can let me know what you think. I went with that cardigan from Urban Outfitters, and this white top from Sunday's Best and Aritzia. Also, don't mind the dirty laundry. I'm gonna do my laundry tomorrow. These pants are from Abercrombie. I'll link them below, and then my shoes are from Miss Lola. Got a cute brown bag, some brown sunglasses. This is how the makeup came out. Very daytime glam appropriate. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and if you wanna see more makeup content from me. Pray you all have the best day ever and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also subscribe if you wanna see more content from moi.